Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simon, and today I'm going to give you a presentation about my engineering research method subject, which is the fine entertainment method simulation of a shock test. Now, you should have one question what is a shock test? So, basically, a shock test is a three point bending experience. It consists of putting this B notch specimen on the support, or also an anvil, and then striking this specimen with a hammer, also of course called a striker. So the Sharpie test is using the principle of um, potential energy differences to calculate the amount of energy that can be absorbed by the specimen. And of course, um, this amount of energy is called the toughness of the materials. Here's an example um, of a specimen before and after the Sharpie test. Um, we can say that the Sharpie test is actually widely used in the industry because it is actually cheap and it provides some really reliable results. So the FMM simulation is a computation of the finite element method, which is a manual way to calculate the stress and strain gradient inside the mesh um, composed by a lot of nodes. Um, there is on the market really good reliable FEM simulation software such as Abacus, Ensys, or Ketia. And those software have been designed in order to analyze big structures such as bridge, buildings, aircraft, um, using the power of uh, computation calculation. Because, you know, solving uh, an equation of 9,000 nodes will probably take a lifetime to operate. However, those software um, do not take consideration of all the physical parameters that can have an influence of the Sharpie test. We still need to fully understand um, what are the parameters that have been influenced the direct impact of the Sharpie test. That is the reason why we need to undertake some research in order to analyze and to find model and codes to include in the finite element software. And one thing for sure, we, this is really important to study the parameters that have not been studied yet. So there have been lots of parameters that have been studying uh, during a lot of uh, paper uh, recently and uh, starting in the 1980. I'm going to present uh, you some of those uh, parameters and of course the main parameters that have the more influence on the shop test. Starting with the viscoplastic behavior. Now, um, in 1980, uh, a study describes the plasticity deformation of the specimen due to high pressure, uh, high, sorry, high temperature during the fracture point of the specimen. But uh, this phenomenon has not been included into the interpretation of the result of the specimen. Only in 2005, so way longer after that, um, there has been a model and a code that have been included into software for the viscoplastic behavior of the fracture point. But it's only in 2008 that um, a new and more accurate model has been described uh, uh, I've been describing the viscoplastic behavior, including three different uh, zones inside the specimen. Let's talk about the oscillation phenomenon. In uh, a study in 1999, um, undertake uh, this idea to simulate um, the contact between the striker and the specimen as um, some kind of spring element. So it's a decided to uh, do this research and simulating this um, behavior. And only in 2011, um, a study have demonstrated and established a model of isolated oscillation um, phenomenon by using a high frame rate camera to record um, what's going on during the striking of the specimen. So let's talk about the initial of the striker. Um, in 1999, 
The study showed that the lithium simulation of the Sharpie test can be stopped once the striker reaches 2 mm of displacement after striking the, the sample. It has also been assumed that during this um, simulation, the striker has always a fixed velocity, even after striking the specimen. It's later, only in 2004, that a study has actually developed a model and described the influence of the uh, striker inertia using a ghost train to determine with accuracy um, the crack initiation point during the, the shock test. Let's talk about the shape of the specimen. A study in 2008 uh, started to determine the influence of intrinsic parameters such as the shape of the specimen. It showed that the position of the V notch has actually an influence of the capacity of energy absorption, so directly the toughness. Later in 2014, this was confirmed by a study who showed that the depth of the, uh, the no, uh, V notch spe uh, specimen has an influence in this very capacity too. So this study or those two studies are actually very important because that so that intrinsic parameters can have a direct influence of the toughness of the material. Now let's talk about the quarter of specimen. Uh, it has been a consensus inside the um, FEM uh, simulation world that um, you can represent uh, your specimen in a 3D uh, model by only representing a quarter of it because of um, symmetrical uh, consideration of the behavior during the test. And this model has been widely used uh, in uh, every uh, studies uh, uh, since 1999. So let's talk about the lamination of the samples. Um, in 2008, there has been an investigation about um, a numerical tool that actually can analyze um, hybrid composite structure. Later in 2008, sorry, uh, there has been a correlation uh, between the energy absorption capacity and the numbers of layers uh, on a, a patch on a sample. And only in 2010, there has been an establishment of a model of a code that has been included in the software to analyze those kind of sample. I mean, multi-layered samples. So, now let's talk about the aim of this study. Um, the aim of this study is to determine, like, to determine uh, which is the best model to describe the um, uh, simulation of the contact between the anvil um, and the specimen. So uh, those two studies have actually uh, some contrary um, content. One is using a plain surface contact between the anvil and the specimen, and the other one is actually using a friction contact model to describe this phenomenon. So I made this following hypothesis. The consideration of friction between the specimen and the anvil when the striker hits the sample is a better model of simulation and can provide more accurate uh, and close to reality results with FEM computing than the other models. So, I decided to <coughs> undertake my research design by using a mixed method because actually um, we have to compare which one of the two models is closest to mechanical tests, so the reality. So we need to test um, different, uh, different materials, and we need to do that several times to obtain uh, a correct sample uh, to analyze. And of course, after that, we need to simulate um, the two models uh, apart and then compare the results obtained with the model of friction and the model of plane surface contact with the real specimen of the Sharpie test. And after that, by describing um, visually 
the results, we can say which one of the two models has really uh, can really best fit to uh, describe the physical phenomenon. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, my name is Simon. Thank you so much.